in this video we'll cover how to build an offline first Flutter app with Superbase and PowerSync. To keep it simple, we'll follow the PowerSync Superbase integration guide, I'll link to that in the description. And before starting, you need to have free accounts with Superbase and PowerSync, links to those below, and have Flutter set up. With this architecture, you change your app's read and write database from Superbase in the cloud to a SQLite database embedded within your app. This will make your app always available, even when users are unexpectedly offline. And PowerSync will take care of syncing the data back to Superbase, which will still be your source of truth. The first thing we'll do is create a PowerSync instance and connect it to Superbase. So we'll go to the PowerSync dashboard, create an instance, give it a name, and then for credentials, we'll say we'll use Superbase authentication. And at connections, we'll create a new one, and then move over to Superbase, go to the database information, and copy those values into the PowerSync modal. So you'll copy the name, you'll also have to go find your password, and copy that into the model as well. And once that's all there, you can test the connection and save. Your instance will then be provisioned. This will take about two minutes, but we can skip ahead. And there we can see that the deployment has been completed. Next, we'll create some database tables. So we'll go over to the PowerSync documentation. We'll copy this code over here, go over to Superbase, go to the SQL editor, paste it in here. We'll run it. We can ignore this warning and you'll see that it doesn't run successfully. PowerSync uses the Postgres write ahead log to replicate data changes, so we'll need to create a publication. For that, we'll look at the documentation, copy this code over here, go to the SQL editor, paste it in here, and run it, and you'll see that it's run successfully. Sync rules allow you to control which data gets synced to which users. So in order to enable that in our app, we'll look at the integration guide in the documentation, copy the example code, go over to the sync rules file, select all of that and then just paste what we've copied. And then all that's left to do is to deploy the sync rules. So we need to select the instance that we'd like to deploy to and then just confirm and you'll see that the sync rules are being deployed. This will take a few minutes to complete so we'll skip ahead and see what it should look like when it does. The last thing we need to do is make sure that everything runs on Flutter. So we'll go over to the integration guide, copy this terminal command, go over to the terminal, paste it in there and that'll clone the Flutter project to your machine. From there, you can open it on VS Code, go to this lib folder, open app config.dart, and there you can see some configuration. What we'll do now is we'll go into Superbase, we'll go to Project Settings, and we'll go to API, and then we'll copy this URL and paste it into VS Code, replacing the values already there, and then go and copy the non key and do the same there, also just replace what's already in the file. Next, we need to find this PowerSync URL. So we'll go to the PowerSync dashboard, right click on the Flutter to do app, click edit instance, and go ahead and copy that instance URL. We'll then go to VS Code and also replace that value with that copied value and save. Next, we'll go to the terminal. We'll open our simulator app here to make sure that we can open the app in iOS. And then we'll run the command Flutter run in the terminal itself. This will bring up the Flutter app on the iOS device. To make things simple, we're just going to go over to Superbase and go over to Providers under Authentication and turn off the Confirm email setting. That'll make it easier to test the app. So back at the app here, we can sign up. I'm just gonna add a random email here, hello at example.com, and we can add a password and then click Sign Up. And then we'll be able to add a new list to the to-do list app. I'm just going to call this new list and create that here. And then I can add items to that list as well. I can add item one, I'll add that, and then maybe item two as well. And as soon as I add these items, they'll appear in Superbase. I can go over there. I can see that the user, hello at example.com is over there. And then the table lists has got this new list. And the to-dos table has got the two items that I added. So let's get to the syncing. If I open another simulated device, in this case, it's an Android device, I'll sign in with the same credentials at the same email and password, and I'll effectively be logged in as the same user on two different devices. And what you'll see is that on both devices, I've got the same list with the same items. I can add new items and you'll see them being immediately displayed on the different devices. And that's because PowerSync is syncing this data back to Superbase and then also to all the devices that are signed in. So what happens if I'm offline? So if I disconnect from Wi-Fi here, you'll see that both of these devices now no longer sync. So if I add a new item on the right here and add one on the left, you'll see that they don't sync, uh, they don't display on the other devices. 
and they also don't sync with Superbase, so they're not in the Superbase table either. But when I go back online, as soon as I have connectivity, the data will appear on Superbase as well as the two different devices here on the screen as well. So if I go to Superbase, there it is, and back to the devices, those items are synced. And that's it. Try it out yourself and let us know if you have any questions.